In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to the idea of a periodic function. Let's start with its definition. A periodic function is a function that has a pattern of y values that repeat at regular intervals. One complete repetition of a pattern is called a cycle, and the horizontal length of one cycle on the graph of a periodic function is called its period. And the last definition you need to know is amplitude which is half the distance between the max and min values of a periodic function. And now let's do an example where I teach you how to recognize if a function is periodic or not. Example one says determine if the function is periodic or not, and then if it is, state the period of the function. So let me zoom in on this function and let's start by deciding if it's periodic. Does it have a pattern of y values that repeats over and over and over again? To determine if this function is periodic or not, what I'm going to do is try and map off one cycle of this function that I think has a pattern of y values that repeats over and over and over again. We could choose any arbitrary starting point for our cycle. It wouldn't matter where we start. I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to map off what I think is one cycle. Notice what I highlighted in red, that cycle, if I shift it over, notice it lines up exactly with what happens after that cycle. So that pattern of y value seems to repeat over and over and over again. And so that you can clearly see that those two cycles match, maybe I'll do that second cycle, I'll do it in a different color. Let me shade in that second cycle in green. This red cycle and this green cycle match exactly. They have the exact same pattern of y values. So that makes this function a periodic function. And for any periodic function, we can state its period. Now to find the period of a function, we're just looking for the horizontal length of one cycle. I did put a note above this question telling you how we could find the period of a function. Now I've already mapped off two cycles of this function, but if I hadn't done that yet, we could choose any x coordinate we want to find the start of a cycle, and then move to the right and estimate the x coordinate of where the next cycle begins, and then find the difference in those x coordinates to calculate the period of the function. But since I've already mapped off two cycles of this function, if we just look at this green cycle, when finding the period of the function, we're finding the horizontal length of this cycle. So from the start to the end of the cycle, what is the difference in the x values? That would tell us the period of the function. Well, the cycle starts at an x value of 0 and finishes at an x value of 6. So the horizontal length of this cycle is 6, meaning the period of the function is 6. Let's try another example. How about this one here? If we try and find a pattern of y values that repeats, I don't seem to be able to find it. Maybe you would think that this is one cycle of the function. But if you notice, that cycle does not repeat. If I drag this over, notice it doesn't line up exactly with the next section. And that would be true for any cycles you tried to map along this function. The pattern of y values would not repeat. So for that reason, all we have to do for this function is say that it's not periodic. And now let's move on to the next example. Example two says, is the function periodic? If so, what is the amplitude? Remember, amplitude is half the distance between the max and min values. So to find the amplitude, we can just follow this formula, which tells you to do the y coordinate of the max minus the y coordinate of the min. That finds you the full distance between the max and the min. And then divide it by two to get half the distance between max and min, which is what we call amplitude. So looking at this function, let's start by determining if this function is periodic or not. It does seem to have a pattern of y values that repeats. Let me choose a random starting point. I'll choose at the peak of one of those sections, and then I'll map off what I think is one cycle of this function. Notice that red section, that cycle that I mapped off, has a pattern of y values that repeats over and over and over again. I'll color in a few of these cycles in different colors so you can see it. There you go, I've mapped off three cycles of this function. So this function is periodic. And now the question asks us to find the amplitude of this function. When finding the amplitude, it's good to first of all find a maximum point on the function. So a point that is the highest the function ever goes. I can use that point right there. And also find a point at the minimum of the function. Find a point where it's the lowest the function ever goes, which is this point right here. I'll label that as my min point. And then to find the amplitude, that's just half the vertical distance between those points. We'll start by finding the full vertical distance between those two points, and we can find that by subtracting their y values. The y value of the maximum point right here would be 3, 
and then we subtract the y value of the minimum point. The minimum point, its y value is right there at negative 1. So 3 minus negative 1, which is 4, gives me the full vertical distance between the points. For amplitude, we want half of that vertical distance, so I need to cut this in half. 4 divided by 2 is 2, which means the amplitude of that function is 2. And for fun, if we wanted the period of the function, we could just find the horizontal length of one cycle of this function. To find the horizontal length of that cycle, well, the cycle starts at negative 6 and finishes at negative 2. So to find the period of this function, I can just find the difference in those x values. Negative 2 minus negative 6 is 4. And if we were to count from the beginning to the end of the cycle, it's 1, 2, 3, 4 units. And each unit based on our scale is 1, which is why the period of this function is 4. So once again, to summarize, to make sure you know the difference between amplitude and period, amplitude, you take the vertical distance between the max and the min, and then cut it in half, and then period is the horizontal length of one cycle. Let's go ahead and do another example. In this periodic function, determine the period and the amplitude. So this time it tells us it's a periodic function. So what I'm going to do is try and map off one cycle. Once again, I'll start at a maximum point and then map off a cycle until it gets back to that maximum point. So that purple section is one cycle, and I'll show you that this red cycle is the exact same as that purple cycle. So this function does have a pattern of y values that repeats over and over again, so it is periodic. Let's state the period of the function and the amplitude. We can start by doing the period of the function. The period is just the horizontal length of one cycle, so the horizontal length from the beginning of a cycle to the end of a cycle. To calculate the period, we know it starts at negative 5 and finishes at 1, so we could just find the difference between 1 and negative 5. 1 minus negative 5 is 6. Or what you could do is just count the units. Because our scale is going by 1s, if we count the period, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units between the start and end, which is why the period is 6. And now let's do amplitude. To find the amplitude, I'm going to want to label a maximum and a minimum point. The maximum is the highest the function ever goes, and the minimum is the lowest it goes. To find amplitude, I'm going to find the vertical distance between those two points, and then cut it in half. That's what amplitude is. So to find the vertical distance between the two points, I'm going to subtract their y values. I'll do the y value of the max. The y value of the max is 3. And then I subtract the y value of the minimum point. Here's the minimum point. Its y value is negative 2. So 3 minus negative 2 is the full distance between the max and the min. The full distance is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But amplitude needs to be half of that. So we'll divide it by 2 to get our amplitude of 5 over 2, or as a decimal, you could write 2.5. Okay, now that you feel comfortable finding the period and amplitude of a periodic function, let's look at the next example, where we're going to be working with that same function we just had, but we're going to be predicting future values of this function using the principle that for a periodic function, the pattern of y values keeps repeating at regular intervals. So for that function, it says determine the value of the function at an x value of 2 and 5. Find f at 2 and f at 5. We'll start with f at 2. If I go to my function, I'm going to look when x is 2, where's the function? The function is right here. It's at the point 2, comma, 1, which means the value of the function when x is 2 is 1 f at 2 equals 1. And then let's also find f at 5. I'm going to go up to my function and find where the function is when x is 5. It's right here at this point, the point 5, 0. So f at 5 is 0. And then using those values, I need to determine f at 8, f at negative 10, and f at 14. Notice those x values don't show up on this graph. But because this function is periodic, let me map off one cycle of it in purple for you. I know that pattern of y values that I mapped off, I know it repeats over and over and over again. And the period of this function, remember we calculated it in the previous question, it's 6. So this pattern of y values repeats every 6 units. So if I want to calculate f at 8, well f at 8 is over on, over on my graph over here. We can't see it. but I know whatever f at 8 is, it's going to be equal to f at 8 minus 6, right? 
if I move six units to the left or right of any point, the function is going to be back at the same spot because the period of the function is six. And f at eight minus six, well, that's just f at two. So the value of the function when x is two is going to be the same of the value of the function when x is eight because they're six units apart and the period of the function is six. It means every six units, it, the function is going to be back at the same y value. And we know the value of f at two, f at two is one, which means f at eight must also be one. And we'll use that same logic to calculate f at negative 10 and f at 14. f at negative 10, well, to bring it back to one of these values that I know, negative 10 is to the left of those. So I'm going to add the period to negative 10. So f at negative 10 would be equal to f at negative 10 plus six, which is f at negative four. But I don't know the value of f at negative four. So I'm going to add six to that as well, which is equal to f at two. And I know the value of f at two, f at two equals one. So f at negative 10 also has to be equal to one. And then let me shrink these and we'll do this one more time to find f at 14. f at 14 would be equal to f at 14 minus six, which is equal to f at eight. But we don't know f at eight, so I can move six units to the left of eight again. So that's equal to f at eight minus six, which is f at two. And once again, f at two, we know is equal to one. So all of these values are all actually equal to each other because they're all multiples of six away from each other. And the period of this function is six. And then part C says, determine four values of x so that f at x equals two. Well, let's go and find where is this function equal to two? Let me draw a horizontal line through two and notice the function is equal to two. Let's just pick one of the spots where it intersects that line I drew. It's equal to two right there. I'll label that point. A point is the point zero, two. So f at zero equals two. So I'll say f at zero equals two. And I know because this function has a period of six, if I move six units to the right or left of zero, the function will be at the exact same height. And in fact, I can see that here. Moving six units to the right, I see the function right there at an x value of six also has a y value of two. If I move six units to the left, when x is negative six, the function is once again at a height of two. So I know f at zero equals two, f at negative six equals two, and f at six equals two. And if I wanted another value, I could just add or subtract six from either of these and get me another place where the function is going to have a y value of two. So I know f at six plus six, which is f at 12, will also equal two. And let's do one last example where we do a bit of an application. It says a cutting machine chops strips of plastic into their appropriate lengths. The following graph shows the motion of the cutting blade on the machine in terms of time. So the x-axis is time and the y-axis is the height of the blade. Part A says state the max height of the blade, the min height, and the amplitude of the function. Well, the highest the blade is above the cutting board is up here. And the height at that point is 0.5 centimeters. And the lowest the blade ever is above the cutting board is right here, when it's actually at a height of zero above the cutting board. So it actually hits the cutting board at that time. So this is the lowest the function ever goes, which is a height of zero. So we can write those two answers. The max height was 0 0.5 and the min height was zero centimeters. And if we wanna calculate the amplitude, you do the y coordinate of the max minus the y coordinate of the min and then divide it by two. So in this case, our y coordinates are heights. So I find the max height and then subtract the min height and then divide by two. Plugging into the formula would be 0.5 minus zero over two, which is 0 0.25. That's the amplitude, which is half the distance between the max and the min heights. Part B says, what's the period of the function? That's the horizontal length of one cycle. Let me map off one cycle of this function in green. There's one cycle. Notice that cycle has a pattern of y values that keeps repeating over and over again. And what's happening if we apply it to this application where we have a cutting blade, the cutting blade is staying stationary above the cutting board for three seconds. It's staying at a height of 0.5. And then it drops down, cuts whatever's on the cutting board, and then goes back up. That's one cycle of the function. And the horizontal length of that cycle, well, it starts at zero seconds and finishes at four seconds. 
So the horizontal length of that cycle is four, which means the period of this function is four. Part C says state the next two times that the blade will strike the cutting surface. Well, it strikes the cutting surface at three and a half, and then again here at seven and a half. Notice those are four units apart, and that's because the period of the function is four seconds. So we just have to find what is four seconds after seven and a half. Seven and a half plus four is 11 and a half. So it's gonna strike the cutting surface at 11 and a half seconds, and then again, four seconds after that, which would be 15 and a half seconds. So that's it for our intro to periodic functions lesson. Make sure you go to Jensen Math and get the accompanying worksheet and give the practice questions a try. Jensen